Hey, what's going on everyone? So today I'm going to be installing a auxiliary switch system. Now, while I will be installing this on my Hummer H3, this video can literally apply to almost any vehicle out there. Now, if you're not sure what an auxiliary switch system is, basically it's a system that allows you to hook up multiple 12 volt accessories to a single source and then use a control panel inside the vehicle to control all of them. So say you got different accessories like an engine fan, uh, some off-road lights, you can go ahead, plug everything into the one control box and then you could go ahead and power it all up using a control panel. Now the specific switch system that we'll be using in this video is the S-Pod Source LT, which is a universal six switch system. Now, unfortunately they don't make a vehicle specific model for the H3. So I gotta go ahead and use the universal one and adapt it to fit it into the H3. So even if you don't wanna go with an S-Pod and prefer another brand such as Switch Pros, Trigger Controller, or Oxbeam, the concept of how all these switch systems work are very similar. So you should still be able to get a lot of valuable information out of this video. Now I do wanna say that this project is meant for someone who has a little bit of experience with wiring. If you've never done any type of wiring before, you might not wanna do this because once you go ahead and get this power distribution unit installed, you've just signed yourself up for six or eight more wiring projects. Whether that's an engine fan, LED lights, anything like that, you're signing yourself up for a bunch more wiring projects. So if you don't feel comfortable doing all that wiring or don't have that many auxiliary accessories in mind that you wanna to add to your rig, maybe this is a project you could do at a later date. Okay, so this video is split up into two main parts. First part is me giving a full demonstration on how the S-Pod Source LT works on a test bench. The reason why I wanted to do it this way is because when I go to install the S-Pod onto here, it's just going to be a whole mess of wiring. It's gonna be way harder to understand how the system works in concept. So I decided to go ahead, set it up on a test bench so you could see exactly how it works. So then in part two, which is still a part of this video, we'll go ahead and install it onto the H3. I'm not going to be super, super detailed on the installation process there. I'm not gonna show you how to remove every body panel and whatnot, cause that would just take way too long. But I will go ahead and show you the basics of how I am wiring this thing in and what you need to do in order to install it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put everything on a test bench piece by piece so I can show you how all of this works in concept. So to start, this is our power distribution unit. This is the thing that we're actually going to be hooking up all of our 12 volt accessories to. So say for instance, you got an LED bar, the only thing you gotta hook up to it is the positive and negative wires. Usually with like an LED bar or something, they'll give you some kind of like harness like this uh, to wire up your new LED bar, but we don't need this because we're using this now. So all you gotta do is literally just hook up the positive and negative wires and you'll be good. So obviously we're gonna need a way to power up the box, which is why we have both a positive and negative cable coming out of the box. So on the positive side, we have a 50 amp fuse. So if you were to accidentally mess something up, you shouldn't break this. Uh, you're protected with the fuse, which is really nice. So for my vehicle application, I went ahead and went with the model that has 36 inch cables. You can also get one that has 84 inch cables if you do need some additional wiring. Now let's go ahead and pick this thing up and have a look inside. So all you gotta do is unscrew this right here and the cover comes right off. So this is what the inside looks like. Now for this test bench demonstration, I'll just be leaving the cover off. It'll just make it a whole lot easier to connect things right here and you guys can actually see what I'm doing. If you go to wire this up in real life, you're supposed to wire everything through the back of it right here. You got some holes right here to wire everything through. Also for this demonstration, I did disable the low voltage cutoff feature. Basically that is a feature that will automatically shut off this power distribution module when you go to turn off your vehicle. This is nice so it won't cause any kind of parasitic drain. How you do that is basically you simply move this little jumper pin from the two three slot into the one two slot. As you can kind of see here, all you gotta do, pull this thing out right here and put it into the one two slot instead of the two three slot and that feature will be disabled. Uh, because for this test bench, I'm just gonna be using a 12 volt battery so I'm not gonna be able to get 14 volts. So that's the reason I did that. So all these little screws on here are where we're gonna be hooking up our power and ground wires to. If I go ahead and put this up closer to the camera right here, you could see that they're labeled. So right here we have SW4, which is switch four. So that's the positive wire. So that's a red wire that we're gonna be hooking up here. And then right next to it, we have our ground source. So uh, if you have something on switch four, like an LED bar, you put your power wire here, your ground wire here, and that's good. And obviously you got, you know, five here, six here, you know, and et cetera for those 
those right there. So if you go ahead and take a look at this purple dot right here, this is where we're going to be plugging in all of our rocker switches to. So all of the rocker switches get condensed into a single plug that we're going to be plugging into here. If I flip this to the side, you may actually recognize this port if you're into computers. So this is actually a RJ45 port, also known as an Ethernet port. So basically all we got to do is plug that into there and we can control our switches. Now let's go ahead and start making our connections. So here is the rocker panel. This has six switches on here. This is actually a part of their universal kit. Uh, so basically you can mount this to any vehicle. Uh, they do have vehicle specific kits made for Jeeps and whatnot, but they don't have one for the H3. So I got to use the universal one. Also on here, we get a eight pin quick disconnect, which is really nice. So if you ever need to disconnect it, this makes it really easy. And here is the main cable that you'll be running through the firewall. So all we got to do is plug these together like that. And then from there, we can go ahead and plug up our RJ45. So let me go ahead, place this down, plug that in. And now our switching system is in business. Now we can go ahead and hook this up to a battery. Now in S-Pod's official directions, they specifically mention to ground the negative wire to a chassis ground instead of using the negative side of the battery. But since I'm on a test bench, I can't really do that. But when you go to do this in real life, you should chassis ground it. And now we can go ahead and turn on the switches to see if it works. As you can see here, power, 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 power. Now let's go ahead and hook up this KC off-road light. As you can see here, we got both of our power and ground wires connected. I do have the rocker switch off. It would probably be a good idea to disconnect the battery, but for this test, it should be fine. So SW1, that's the positive source right there. Now we can go ahead and try to turn it on. And as you can see here, it works. And that's all there is to it. So typically when you go to mount this power distribution module, you need to mount it in a high and dry area. You do not want to be submerging this in water. It is water resistant, just not waterproof. So a lot of times people will put this close to their fuse box. I'll kind of be putting it in that area. I'll show you when I do the install. But from there, you got to go ahead and run this cable through your firewall. So this needs to go to the interior of your vehicle. And then this needs to go wherever you're going to be mounting your switches at. And of course you hook up the positive side to the battery and they recommend you hook up the negative side to a chassis ground source. And from there, you're ready to go ahead and start plugging up any of your 12 volt accessories. Obviously, you still got to do the wiring for whatever accessory you have. So you got to bring those wires into the engine bay and connect it to there. Now, just for fun, I'll go ahead and hook up some more lights to our system so we can go ahead and use all the rockers just to see what that looks like. All right, check this out. Now we got all six of our rockers connected to some type of light. Right here, we have a white LED reverse light, H3 turn signal, KC off-road light, H3 headlight, H3 side marker, and license plate tag light right here. So let's go ahead and turn these things on. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And take a look at that. The S-Pod is powering all of them, no problem. So obviously this is just for demonstration. You're not actually going to be powering your headlights, your turn signals, or your side markers with an S-Pod. This is for LED bars, air compressors, rock lights, anything of that nature, any 12 volt accessory that you don't need to use all the time and you wanna be able to turn on with the flick of a switch, as you can see here. Another cool feature in this S-Pod is it does have built-in Bluetooth, so you can actually connect a smartphone or a tablet to here and actually control all of your lights and have access to additional features. Here I have it opened up on my Galaxy tab right here, and I can actually switch on and off all of the different lights on here, which is kind of cool. Now this is by no means a substitute for having this physical rocker switch here because the app on here is really not that good. I'm actually using it on this Galaxy tab right here because it doesn't work on my my uh, Samsung Galaxy Note, so I'm having to use it on this tablet here. So there are some additional features that you get on the Bluetooth app that you don't actually get with the rocker switches, so we can go ahead and check those out. If you click on Setup and then click on one of the switches, you can fully customize it. So you can actually change the name of the switch, you can select a icon that they got in here, or you can upload your own image. You can also change the color of the button, so now you can see it's blue, and you can also change the background color to whatever you want. So those are just some basic customizations, but what I think is a lot cooler is we have a couple different modes that we could use for our 12 volt accessories. So if we go back into setup and customize, we can see that we have four different modes here. We have dimmable, momentary, strobe, and flash. So if I select dimmable, 
we have now unlocked a slider that goes from zero to 100%. So if we turn on our light, it's at full power, but now we could lower the brightness, which is kind of cool. So now we're at 3%. There is also the option to have a momentary switch. So basically what a momentary switch is, is you hold it down and it stays on. Once you take your finger off, it turns off. So this would be really useful if you had like a horn or something like that, where you only want to press it for a short amount of time. Also, we do have a strobe feature. So if you go ahead and turn that on, like that, it will basically flash really fast. A uh, little bit annoying. I don't know what you would use that for. I guess for some emergency lights or something. Also, you do have a flash mode, which flickers at a lower rate of speed, which is a lot nicer. I think it's a little bit annoying having that strobe feature on. I think this is a lot better uh, having something like this rather than a strobe because, I mean, this is just really annoying, as you can see here. But the, the flash is uh, a lot nicer. So those are the four modes you can get, and you can actually go ahead and combine them together. So right now I got on dimmable. I'll select momentary and flash. So now when I click the button and hold it down, the LED will be at 3% power, and it will flash. Uh, strangely enough, you can actually turn on the strobe as well, um, but it just flashes at the flash rate, not at the strobe rate. So I think that's just due to poor app design and not actually a feature, because I don't know why you'd have strobe and flash selected at the same time, because it doesn't work. Uh, it does the exact same thing. So I'm not 100% sure about this, but the changes you make in the Bluetooth app don't actually apply to the rocker switches, as you can see here. Here with my tag light, I got it on flashing mode. If I try using the rocker switch, it'll just light up a solid color. You can see that the switch is on in here. So uh, the four modes that you get on here, you know, that are um, dimmable, momentary, strobe, and flash only apply if you're using the app. I'm not sure if there's any way to write that to the memory of the S-Pod, so every time you turn on the rocker switch, it'll flash, or it will be dimmed to a certain brightness. I think you can only do that through the app. Uh, which is a little bit annoying. That would have been cool to save your settings onto the rocker switch. But as you can see here, it doesn't look like you can because it's not doing the same thing that it's doing through the app. But yeah, the Bluetooth app is a nice bonus if you can get it to work on your specific device. There is a whole way you go about pairing it. Uh, S-Pod actually has a video on that. So if you got one of these systems and need to pair it, go ahead and check out their video on that. But yeah, now that you guys get the concept, we can go ahead and take this off the test bench and install it for real. All right, now let's go ahead and grab the shifter panel where we will actually be installing the S-Pod. We'll go ahead and use a Dremel to cut out the shape for our switches. Luckily, S-Pod includes a template right in the box so you know exactly where to cut. So if you take a look here, this is actually the same size as back here. So it's actually this size right here and not this size. Okay, and as you can see here, we now got our template on. So this is exactly where we will be cutting along here so we can have an exact fit. Okay, now let's see if we can pop this out. Oh. And there we go. Now we will have to clean up uh, a little bit of this right here because as you can see, the plastic kind of melted when I was using the Dremel. All right, went ahead and cleaned it up. As you can see back here, now we don't have any of that melted plastic. But unfortunately, uh, the clip right here is kind of in our way and we're not going to be able to put in our rocker switch. There we go. But now we can go ahead and try to fit in the rocker switches. Wow, look at that. First try, got it in. Looks really good. Overall, looks super clean. If I go ahead and flip around here, you can see the back. And you could still take it out, so if you were to pull this panel out, you could just go ahead and press down these tabs right here and pull it out if you needed to do so. But now we can go ahead and connect the extension cable to it, so just like that. 
Also, I just went ahead and color coded my S Pod switch wires because I got a number of aftermarket wires already in my truck and I don't want to get them confused. So, anyway, we can go ahead and come over to the truck. Now, I do want to note that I'm actually doing this S Pod project while I'm doing a number of other projects. So, as you can see here, I got a bunch of wires just laying around and I already got the center council out, I got the head unit out, and I got the uh, plastic knee bolster gone right there. So, I'm actually doing this project while doing other projects because it just makes sense to do them at the same time. But anyway, now we can just go ahead and start running our Ethernet RJ45 plug uh, to the firewall. We can go ahead and feed this wire right under here because there is a large opening. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this to where the knee bolster is. I already have some existing wires there, so I'm just gonna follow that path. All right, now we got our wires there. We can go ahead and put our center console back together for now. Push that up into here. And this whole thing is made much easier because I currently don't have a head unit in here because I'm going to be installing a new one. But now we can go ahead and place our center console into position. So it looks like our switch system isn't going to be dropping in here as easily as I would have hoped. Uh, as you can see on right here, we got these little uh, plastic clips that hold it in place. Um, as you saw previously, I had to take this one off. So it looks like the plastic clip thing in here is just a little bit too big to accommodate our switch switches that will be going in between here. So I'll go ahead and have to do some trimming to this one right here. This one should still be fine. So I just got done trimming with the Dremel and here's what it looks like. Had to trim about two inches here, two inches there, a little less in the back right there. Here is the other one for comparison. Obviously not ideal to have to trim this, but we still got this one here. So as I said before, we're not gonna have this piece now rattling around at all because it will still be supported by this one right here. Uh, I do wanna say if you try doing this, you gotta be very careful with the Dremel in here or else you're going to nick something right here. Luckily I was very careful. I didn't nick or hit anything or cut anything I wasn't supposed to. But yeah, here's what it looks like right there. And if we go ahead and take our switches, we can now go ahead and insert them in between here with no problems. Just like that. Now reattach our switches. And they click in perfectly. Now we can go ahead and wire up the ethernet port from our rocker switches. Now you guys are not going to have this, but I have a bunch of wires already here that are attached to my metal knee bolster bracket right here. Uh, these wires are for various other projects and various other things. Uh, some of these are relay harnesses, uh, video cables for like backup camera type stuff, uh, CB radio, a bunch of different wires. So I basically went ahead and created my own little kind of wire highway here using these little plastic clips right here so basically i just went ahead drilled into uh, the knee bolster and put on these plastic clips right here so i can go ahead and attach new cables to this bracket right here and everything will still be clean after that we can go ahead and go through the firewall now on my h3 since i have so many wires i actually went ahead and drilled a larger hole right there so I can go ahead and run some more wires. Uh, on your stock H3, you're not gonna have that, but if you go ahead and take a look at that uh, wire with the brown piece of tape on it, that is actually a factory uh, little pass-through uh, for the firewall, so you might be able to stuff the cable through there, but if not, you might have to go ahead and drill a bigger hole and then get some kind of rubber grommet. All right, and here is the ethernet cable going right here. Going down to here, up to here, through the firewall right there, and then it comes through here, as you can see there, and then this cable is actually 
way longer than I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to length because I'm gonna go ahead and be putting my S-Pod right here. And if you notice, I got some like weird wires just kind of hanging out right here. These wires are actually going to be connected to the S-Pod. I actually went ahead and did some pre-wiring for the accessories that I wanna run on the S-Pod. So I went ahead and put the power and ground wires right there because the S-Pod will be going there. So once we go ahead and get that mounted, I can go ahead and cut these to length and connect them right up. So when the S-Pod is mounted, I'll actually have some accessories that I can go ahead and try out. All right, now I got the knee bolster bracket back onto here. So our rocker switches with the ethernet cable goes from here, follows this whole line of wires that I already have here, through here to the firewall. All right, just went ahead and shortened my ethernet cable, put a new RJ45 on here. I shortened it by like four feet, so it is a lot shorter now. So now we're ready to mount the S-Pod. Now S-Pod, the company does actually sell a number of vehicle specific brackets, but unfortunately they do not make one for the H3. So I had to go ahead and make my own custom bracket so I could go ahead and bolt it right up. How this works is I got four holes on here. And as you can see, there are four mounting screws on here. So I go ahead, put this like this. So now taking you guys over to the truck, I wanna mount the S-Pod right here. And I noticed I had this factory hole right here. So what I did is basically go ahead and make a hole on the top of the bracket. So this hole right here that I made just slides right under here like that. And then I got a bolt that I'm gonna be putting in. Now I'm gonna bolt my custom bracket to the back of the S-Pod. I'm not actually going to be bolting it onto the truck just yet, uh, cause I need to go ahead and cut my wires to length, but I wanna go ahead and just bolt this to the back of here so I can kind of get it in the approximate position that it's gonna need to go. Now it's time to size this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and chassis ground this right here. So because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to length because this wire is more than I need. Uh, for the positive side, I'm pretty sure the wire is just the right length so if I go ahead and stick this right here you can kind of see that my red positive wire is going to be the perfect length so I don't need to cut that side just the negative side on the s-pod all right now we got this cut to length so now we can go ahead and put it on this ground All right, our ground is in. Let's go ahead and run the positive side wire. All right, so now I got the positive wire going from right here, right here, to the positive side of the battery, and I got my ground right over here. I know this looks kind of messy right now, but when I go ahead and put everything back together, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Velcro all this, and it will look a lot better. But for the meantime, it's gonna look a little bit messy as I do some of this wiring. Anyway, now let's go ahead and connect our RJ45. Now this is why I didn't want to bolt it in, so now I can more easily manipulate this. All right, so now the S-Pod system is connected, and the next thing I have to do is actually go ahead and wire up some of my 12-volt accessories to it. So skipping forward, I went ahead and cleaned up some of my wires right here, as well as wired my 12-volt accessories to my S-Pod. So we can go ahead and have a look right here, and as you can see, I have two sets of red and black wires. So this first set right here is actually for my camera system, uh, for my head unit. So basically, I got a couple of cameras uh, for a off-road camera system. And the second set right here is actually for my light whips. And then I still have four more spots for additional accessories. I do really like how S-Pod does include these little wire terminal things right in the kits. Uh, I thought I was gonna end up having to use my own, but I actually really do like these uh, because they just slide right under the screw. I was thinking about using some wire terminal loops or something like that, but these that they include in the kit are just a perfect size for it. All right, so the only thing that is left to do now is just to put the cover back on and then we can go ahead and bolt up the s-pod now just to push our s-pod down in a position okay line up the hole put my bolt in there and then now i got a wrench and a flange nut so i could hold it up like that and i'll go ahead and put this in and screw it down all right, and here's what it looks like installed. Pretty good. You still have access to it. You could still go ahead and take off the cover panel if needed to, or you could just go ahead and unbolt it, pull it up here to have better access to it. But yep, it's in there. 
fits nice. Uh, we still got room for other wires and stuff like that. So now we're in the H3 with the newly installed switches and we can go ahead and test them out. So the first switch right here, I got wired to my four camera system. So basically I got four cameras hooked up to this head unit right here. So if I hit the camera button, you could see that nothing pops up because the switch is off. But when I go ahead and flick it on, I now have access to all four of my cameras. I wanted to wire it up to a switch because I don't want to have these cameras on all the time. Basically, I'm only really going to be using this camera system when I'm off-road because that's what I designed it for. But I got my front camera, rear camera, uh, my front skid plate camera, and my rear axle camera. Uh, this really needs to be its own separate video. I don't have enough time to go over all of that. So that is the first switch. Uh, and then the second switch, if I go ahead and turn that on, that is my whip lights. All the other switches right here don't actually do anything yet because there's nothing hooked up. But I got that switch on. So if I go ahead and get out of my H3, you can now see that my whip lights are on, which are pretty cool. So those are the two things that I have wired up so far. In the future, I'm definitely going to go ahead and wire up some more things. So as of now, as you can see, I don't have any of the switches labeled. S-Pod does actually include some stickers that you could go ahead and stick on there to label the switches. But I got something better. So instead of using the stickers that they include in the box, I went ahead and actually just bought some new switches that have printed text and icons on them. So right here is my switch with the camera icon on it and it's printed on there so it looks a little bit nicer. And what I'm going to do here is basically just take off this faceplate because this faceplate is removable. These switches are only a couple of bucks. They're not expensive and if you wanted to get your own custom switches made it would be more expensive. So I'm going to be putting in this one as well as my light it whip one. And I do got some other switches for future projects such as engine bay light because I want to add some engine bay lights uh, to the H3 and then uh, like some spotlights and things that I may or may not do in the future. So I I just went ahead and bought a bunch of different switches and whatnot. So I could just go ahead and easily remove the face plate off of this one and put it on my actual S-Pod one. Now there is an actual tool that you can use to take these apart that they sell, but unfortunately I did not bring mine today. So just using this tool does the same thing. Was able to take it right off. And then now came right out, didn't break. All right, let's get this off. Now to put on the new ones and just like that they work so they're off i'm gonna go to camera turn it on and as you can see camera is on go ahead and flick on my light whip and if you take a look my light whip is on so now this does look a lot better with them labeled so that is just a nice finishing touch all right and that's everything Overall, I'm super happy with how these rockers look. It's almost like they were meant to be in here and they're super easy to turn on because you got your elbow on your armrest, you got your hand on your gear shifter, and you can easily go ahead and click them on or off, which is really cool. And then also another benefit is that you could actually remove your center control stack if you need to do some work behind here and you don't have to move the rocker switches at all because they sit so low profile, they will be out of the way. If you went with another switch system, that had a control panel right here that would be too thick and would get in the way of the center control stack, but these don't, so these are out of your way. So again, you could go with whatever brand you want, but the reason why I went with the S-Pod Source LT is because they offer classic rocker style switches that are flush mountable. A lot of these other switch systems use a standalone control panel that you have to mount somewhere. It just doesn't look as clean. I really do like that flush mounted look. It integrates really nice where the H3 gear shifter is right over there. It just fits in really nice out of the way and whatnot. So that's why I didn't go with a different brand. That being said, the system isn't perfect. I would have preferred to have eight switches over six, but unfortunately six is all that fits by the H3 gear shifter. S-Pod does actually sell a eight switch version, but it would not fit there. Also the app uh, for the S-Pod is just not good. I couldn't get my phone to connect to it. I could only get my Galaxy tab to connect to it. So it is lacking with a few features, but again, I just really love that flush mount look and that's why I went with it. So that about wraps it up. In the future, I definitely need to make a video on my new head unit as well as my four camera system. I just did not have any time to explain anything about that in this video, but hopefully you guys did find this video useful. But anyway, I will see you later.